everyone, today it's the making of petal and of course as always I started with the moulded skull and I added my clay, I've done the profile of it already and then I've added her eyes and her eyes this time were lilac eyes so I wanted her to have a little bit of a fantasy look I think. So she's kind of a pin up but she's also a little bit fantasy. So I'm just adding on clay around her head, here she looks quite surprised um, but of course it does always look surprised until you add all the eyelids and give the face some kind of expression but I was trying to keep the eyes big and the lips big and I'm using my tool as I always do to sort of sculpt out the cheekbones using it on the side to, to sort of sketch it's just my way I don't know why I do it but I always do it and then I'm adding some extra clay for her brow bone and just taking a piece of clay divide it in half make sure it's two equal parts on either side and then just sort of blocking in the eye adding little pieces of clay until I get the shape that I want I find the sides of these tools really useful to really sketch out what I want gosh that lighting is a bit strange but anyway it was just for a moment I'm not sure if it's bright sunshine or bright fluorescent light but it's a very light that looks better then I was just carried on sort of shaping the eyes trying to get what I want some a sort of wide-eyed look I haven't put the teeth in yet this was when I decided not to put the teeth in and to wait and then do it after the first bake and my pin tools are really useful for the tiny little areas like in the eyes making sure that the eyes are the right size on both sides and the, the same shape ball tools are brilliant at the end for adding in um, some extra especially the depth areas pin tools and ball tools are really good for making sure that there are shadows the shadow areas are really dented in especially around the eyes and the bridge of the nose and then it's time to smooth everything and using my mineral spirit sometimes called white spirit as always to smooth it out and then it's time to paint and as always i always use a dark, slightly darker tone than the color of the clay to add into the shadow areas then carrying on with the eyebrows mapping the eyebrows with some medium color for the eyebrows I wanted her to have lilac hair so I sort of wanted them to be quite light but not very light then I'm putting some color underneath the eye just to add a little bit of extra depth to the eyelashes the lower lashes I also do the same for the top extra dark on the top so that it, when you add the eyelashes it make, makes it look very full so you're not you're not just relying on the color of the eyelashes to get that really full look it does look a bit strange with no teeth so then I went on to sculpting the legs and for this one I did sculpt them separately basically I always carry on sculpting them when they're on the body because once you put them on the body you see all the things that you should have done a bit differently on the legs I just feel like sculpting it all together is really the best way but this way you do get the shape and the volume on the leg uh, while it is easier to handle uh, separately this one was quite a challenge because I couldn't use my sculpting stand because she's lying down and she was also twisting her body so that was another thing that was trying to get that pose right it took quite a lot sometimes I actually sculpt and I think I'm never going to get it right this is the one time I'm going to get it so wrong and I'm going to have to give up uh, ever thinking I was a doll maker that's usually what I end up thinking at some point along the way so I'm just adding clay and using my trusty tools to blend them in jumping all over the place as I always do because I think sculpting as much of the body all together as possible is the best so as you can see I did end up adding the, the legs and then adding more clay to the legs so it really them being separate was really just to get some volume on onto them and then you can sort of place them together because the legs were touching each other so that's always a bit challenging too still adding more clay to the tops of the legs making them fuller I'm also using a cake stand which turns I think they call it a lazy Susan I'm not sure very very useful when you want to be able to turn your figure also make it a little bit higher on your desk so you can see better so you're not sort of bending over it so much and also you don't have to touch it every time you want to turn it around and sculpt on another area adding some more clay to the back and um, blending it in trying to get that twist on her on the torso also making sure that none of my wire sticks out on the knees I often have that problem where the wire gets really really close to the clay on the knees and you have to make sure you've added enough and then of course I had to sculpt the underneath so I had to tip her upside down hope I didn't squash all the bits that I'd already sculpted and make sure that her stomach looked correct and it's kind of slightly twisted pose and then it's time to smooth everything else again that's the relief when you get to that part where you know that you've done most of the sculpting and you can just smooth everything out onto the hands so while the body bakes I'm doing the hands I think I baked the body here I'm not too sure and I had this tool which I haven't used for a while which is really useful actually where you can hold 
it, well, it holds the hand for you, so you can sculpt it. It's actually very, very useful. I haven't used it for a while. So once everything was added and she was baked again, time for the painting of the body, just adding all the shadows. Also, I used, I put a little bit of clay around her waist, like sort of just to support the fabric that I then added afterwards. And of course, I painted it gold. And then I was doing her hair first before I added the fabric. So I gave her lilac hair. I think it was viscose. Oh, no, I think it was Surrey Alpaca, which is a very lovely fiber. It's very, very soft, natural fiber, obviously, animal fiber, but it has very much the similar qualities as viscose, which is very soft, easy to work with and a very fine fiber. And then I dyed some silk in a sort of ombre from brown to lilac for her dress and added that at the end. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for supporting me. I really appreciate every one of you. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, I'd be so happy to welcome you into my studio. I'm currently uploading one hour of sculpting tutorials each month. We've just finished sculpting the Salty Mermaid in a teacup, and I've posted the first part of sculpting the Absinthe Fairy for this month. I'd love to see you there. You can also sign up for my mailing list for free by clicking on the link in the video description. Everyone who signs up gets a free in-depth sculpting a nose tutorial. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thank you. See you again soon.